Hello everyone and welcome back to Shellington Extended. So today we've got a lot to do. Um, by that I mean we've got to go over to field number 77, which is where we did the signage bells very recently, and we need to basically pick them up and stack them. We're going to use the Marshall trailer today to do that with. Uh, I think this is probably the best way of doing it because if we don't have to, we don't have to stack them too high. And doing it this way is probably the best way of doing it. So I'm going to use it. If it doesn't work very well, then we'll probably get an auto stacker. But we'll have to see. Uh, right, so first of all, we need to unload this and I need to toggle the unloading side. So we need to press M to change the side. That is where I need them. So if we press O, there we go. That is done. So yeah, we're going to head over to field 77. Field number 78, which is the hay bales, we're going to leave for today. We don't need to move them in a rush, unless it's going to rain, of course. Because, yeah, the priority is to move the silage bales to the side, and they need to stay there to ferment. So, if we can get that done today, that'd be brilliant. The hay bales will move with just a, a bale spike, I should think. We don't need to uh, use any auto stacker for them. It's only a few. Uh, but if I was to do field number 77, all those signage bells, it would be very, very boring if I used a spike or a grab, a grab actually, because they're, they're obviously wrapped. Um, so yeah, an auto stacker is the only solution for this, really. If this was just me in my own time doing this, where nobody else was watching, then it would be okay to do this by hand, or obviously with a tractor, but yes, I think when we've got so much to do, on video, we're going to have to auto stack it. As you'll probably be aware, this isn't technically an auto stacker. In real life, this wouldn't work. It's just a standard flatbed trailer or bale trailer. Uh, but it does have the function of acting like an auto stacker. So, yeah, technically, this isn't going to be realistic, but I don't want to be spending like three episodes just moving the bales about because that would be so boring. Right, okay, this is going to be quite tricky. It would be easier if we were coming in from the other way. We might have to turn it round. I head up here, reverse into the gateway, and come back in the opposite direction. Right, it's still quite difficult, I suppose, because it's like a blind side reverse almost. It is quite tight. And there is a hedge here, and technically we're demolishing the tractor in the hedge. Yeah, I am not good at reversing this thing. Maybe we should go in the other way. Okay, so we're finally round, but still quite difficult to get around here. Hopefully. Good. Just about, I think. Yes, it's a very long trailer. For these kind of roads, it's very tight. And this is just to get into the field. Crazy. So if we just spin around here, we'll use the bales as like a roundabout. Uh, right, okay, so what we need to do is we need to change the loading type and the product type. Uh, the product type needs to be it doesn't class it as a silage round bale because they're not fermented. It is actually a... what would it be? Let me get this right. I think it's a mixed bale. Yes, I went past it. There we go. It's a round mixed bale. The loading type is automatic, so that is all good. If we press B it should load. Fantastic. So we've got plenty to go out here. Uh, we probably should have used a normal auto stacker I suppose but we don't have to stack it it just has to be sort of laid out flat got two here we'll go in the middle it doesn't look realistic and I don't really like doing it this way but as I've already explained the reasons behind it we are limited to 15 miles per hour but it's still much quicker than moving this thing or this field with a grab. We'd still be on the first bale. I need to find a good place to put them. They don't necessarily need to be in this field. Hey, 
what the? That one isn't wrapped. Hmm. That's a hay bale. The hay bale has managed to get into our stack. How weird. Even though we've set the product type. Hmm. Not sure how that's happened. We'll have to take it out manually, I think, later on. Two here. And there is space for two more. We've pretty much done the whole field in one trailer though. That is very impressive. It is good and it looks good on the trailer. It's just the realism side of things isn't quite so good. This is probably the best field to store them in. Field number 78 along this hedgerow. I think if we can... Well, obviously I have to move across a little bit, otherwise they'll be in the hedge, but roughly about here should look quite good, as long as they don't roll away. Here goes. That seems good enough to me. And it looks neat as well. So, yeah. We'll head back for the final... how many are there? Four or seven bales, I think. And then we'll be done. Put it back onto cruise control, just so we maintain a good speed. And that, amazingly, already is us done here. There we go. So, hmm, it, even with this, it took much quicker, much shorter time than I thought it would do. These ones should be able to fit just behind them. As long as we don't sort of spawn them inside the other ones, because that would be like an explosion going off. And there we have it, all done. What I have just done off screen is I have moved the hay bale from this stack to this stack over here. So it's going to be very easy for us just to come along here now with a bell spike and pick it up because clearly hay within the grass is not right at all. So the fermenting process is currently 0.5% which is understandable, we only did these in the previous episode. So when these are done they'll be worth roughly £6,500 providing the quality is A+. And it does look quite good. So that is a big job done. We do have some silage bells ready anyway. We can sell them if we want to or we can use them. I think we'll probably have to use them because we're a bit low, as far as I'm aware, on fermented silage in the pit. We will have to check, but uh, yeah, I think it's empty. Obviously this pit over here isn't even fermenting yet. So to keep it simple, we'll be keeping this trailer over here. And what I really do need to do is find a very good shed for storing the really big equipment in and also the stuff which isn't used very often because as you can see, I find it very difficult to get it in here. I suppose we could keep it in this field around the back. Ah, yes. There is an invisible collision here. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I've hit it before. Um, should be okay. Yep. So yeah, if we just put the trailer around the corner, out of the way, this is a grass field anyway, so it doesn't matter if we leave stuff in it, we'll probably keep the tractor attached to it because the tractor doesn't need to do another job at the moment. We have plenty of tractors because I wasn't allowed to sell the John Deere. So we'll just put it here, put the handbrake on of course, and we will be done. We now need to find a different job to do. The animals do need work. If we go on here, um, I'll just have a look and see. We don't have any lambs or beef cows anyway, but these we do own. And as you can see, the cows are seriously lacking feed and water. So I think we're gonna have to prioritize this. 
I don't want to do too much animal work because we've got a lot of animal work to do on Thornton Farm as well. Thing is, I tend to go like a month without doing any animal work and then suddenly everyone needs it. Every every map I'm doing, the animals require it. So, um, yeah, my timing isn't great, I have to admit. But let's just do it anyway. So we'll take this off here. Somebody requested me to take the front loader off. But today... We are going to need it, I think, so we're going to keep it on, but possibly at the end of the episode we'll remove it. So we need to head over to Knaveswell Farm itself and begin doing a bit of feed mixing. I'm assuming we do still have a feed mixer. We should do. I'm going to have to check to see if we've actually got a bale spike for a front loader. As far as I'm aware, we do. Pretty sure we have one for the telehandler, but it would be nice to have one on the John Deere. So if I just stop here, we'll check and just see. Okay, so we don't own one, which is an issue. We're going to have to buy one. And we don't have an awful lot of money. In fact, what I'm going to do is head back to where I've just come from because it would be good to pick up two bales, two hay bales, as they are required for the total mixed ration. There we go. Um, so, can't tilt it up too much. Should be okay. Basically, if I can just get a bale on each spike, then we'll have two bales to use. We're not going to need an awful lot of feed, because we don't have that many cows, but we do need, obviously, some. Now, this is a perfect opportunity for us to take this hay bale out of the stack. I still don't even know how to recognise that as a correct bale to pick up, because obviously it's a hay bale, and I chose mixed bale. Maybe mixed bale just means any type of bale. Not sure. But either way, we'll get it out of there, and that looks a lot better. So, technically, there is a lot of money sat there. Currently, not much at all, because it's still grass. But when it is fermented, it's worth a fortune. Alright, can we get that? No! Terrible! Terrible! What I was going to say was, we'll just put this next to this one. And obviously we need to realign it a bit. And then we should be able to transport both of them. I don't think it's usually a recognisable thing to transport bales on the road for too far like this. Maybe if you're just going down a village lane or something. Pro probably even then actually, it's not advisable but there we go they're on so we'll head back over to the farm get the feed mixer I do hope we have one otherwise this is gonna be terrible uh, let me just check we need to go to this is where I get confused feeding technology and onto here yes we do fantastic that would have been terrible because I wouldn't have had a clue what to do we can't afford to buy one I suppose we could have rented one but that wouldn't have been very good But as it happens, we're okay. Just got to take it very steady now because otherwise we're going to lose the bales. This is a good job for the tractor. I don't use it very often. And I've found a perfect use for it. Hmm. Soggy bales. Lift them up a bit. Where's the fly? I didn't hear the fly. It usually buzzes. And then everybody says, Oh, you got a fly in your room. Right, so here we are. At the main yard, where it's a bit laggier. You do get a lower frame rate here. I'm guessing it's just because of the number of machines and models and stuff. So I'm going to reverse this into here, just temporarily. And we will jump out. 
we need to get a different tractor on the feed mix. Yeah, hang on, where did I put the feed mixer? Is it is it over the shard? I hope it is. Yes, there it is. So we need to get a different tractor onto there. I think I've moved most of my tractors actually, so I'll have to bring one back. I suppose we could use the Axos because it's it's in no use and all the other tractors are not here. Literally. There isn't another single tractor. They're all gone. I think. Yes. Oh no, there is one there. With the Stuart trailer. But not to worry, this should be able to power it. It's not exactly a very big thing. As long as it's tall enough. Because that's quite a high hitch. I, I am assuming you can adjust the height. Yeah, we're fine. So we'll bring it out. And yeah, silage, there isn't any here. So we'll have to use a silage bell from down the road. We'll just pull over so we're not blocking the road too much. And then I'm going to reverse back to straighten up. There we go. And that should be okay. I believe you can turn the mixer on. Can you? I thought you could do. Possibly only if there's something in it. We'll see. Um, but yes. Let's put a bale in. Yeah, we do already have some hay bales here, actually. I just remembered. They should be in the shed on the left-hand side. We've got straw. And hay. Mm, actually, there might not be any... Uh... Let me just check. Oh, yes, there is. There's two. Two genuine ones. They're just... You false things. They're not real. You can even walk inside them. We've got two real ones here, and they're still A+. Plus. Worth £1,710. That is incredible. So I'm going to go with... What's the mix? Uh, two? Two heroes and silage? Yeah, somebody did say recently, you can do two hay and silage, and it's still mixed ration. We'll try it. If it, if it doesn't recognise it as mixed ration, it's okay. Because they, anything they could get is, is perfect. So that's two. And get a silage bale as well. The silage bales are just down here. Come on, door. There we go. And they're worth a lot of money. Oh, come on, door. Let's open again. Quite steep and tight. There we go. So we're going to have to just flip one of these off the stack. Now I've done this before, and even when I say it doesn't matter about spiking them, I still get criticised. So I'll make it clear this time the reason why I am spiking it. Obviously, if it's a wrapped bale, you would not usually ram a spike into it. But as we're going to open the bale in literally a minute's time, it doesn't matter, because we're going to open the, the wrap up anyway. Um, I think, I don't know, I don't know if it was just a few people who didn't understand that that's how it happens. It's not trying to be rude, but um, yeah, I still get sort of a, a critici criticism about it. So just trying to let you know basically how it works, roughly. Because I'm not a farmer, so I don't know myself exactly, but I do know that that's how that works. So uh, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with it, then if you're about to open the bale, you can stab it with a spike. But I think a lot of farms, farms do just use a grab anyway. Uh, whoa, that was fast. So if we put one of these in as well. And I think, yeah, it's 66% full. So if we get another one, we probably could have got two in one go. Pull it over. There we go. And get the final bale. This I would have thought would fill it to the top, and I would hope. But I'm not sure exactly. That's it. Good bit of sack in there. It's going to fall off. Okay, so this should fill it to the top. Well, probably like 80 something percent, because four bales this will be, and we're only on 66% now, so 
that is obviously two thirds. Uh, well, obviously, it's uh, it's showing 66.7, so it's rounded it up. 66.66 recurring. There we go. Yeah, not quite full, but it will do. That is plenty. So we'll lower this down. We'll turn the engine off, and we will get into the Axos. As far as I'm aware, the Axos is a tractor branded for the livestock market anyway. I don't think it would usually be used on an arable farm. Because uh, I can remember a long time ago, I think it was January 2009, I think it was. It was in Farmers Weekly when they brought out a new model. And they were testing it. And it was obviously on a livestock farm, moving bales and stuff. So that must be what it's for. Perfect for this farm. Hello cows. I'm just coming the wrong way through your shed. Don't mind me. You probably have to mind me actually if I drive through you. Let's wait for it to move. Forget that. This cow isn't moving. Oh, yes it is. Yes it is. It's moving as I move. Brilliant. There is a much better way around here. I do this every time. You can go around the outside and it is so much easier. Right, so at the bottom of here, there is a very deep, muddy puddle. And we're already slipping. So I'm going to stick four-wheel drive on. And hopefully we'll be okay. Yeah, pretty good actually. And finally, they have got some feed. They have waited for this for many, many days. And this should be okay. It should suffice for probably three days. We'll see if it flashes up, but I doubt it. No. So, yeah, I'd say it's about three days of feed there. They also do need water. And as far as I'm aware, we do have a water bowser, unless we sold it. But I don't see why I would have done it. Sorry, jackknifed it there. Right, floor it through the mud. Straight through the middle. Ugh. Cow rump. Bit of congestion. Oh, that's it. Have a bit of a kiss. Ear waggle. Oh, this is... Uh, the problem with going this way, you have to wait for all this palaver to finish. Come on! I think they're going. Good. Thank you. This time I'm going to go around the outside because it is a lot easier. I have to remember to shut the gate. And I'll also have a look for the water tank as well. There should definitely be one somewhere. There we go. Right, final thing to do is to jump out, take the PTO shaft off. Then we can detach it. And yeah, do we actually own a water bowser? I hope we do. But we don't seem to. Which is weird because we how have we done the water in the past? Hmm. I can't remember. I think actually the universal tanker we've got will work, but it currently has diesel in, and diesel is quite a, well. It contaminates it quite a bit, so we can't really put uh, drinking water in there. So I think the best thing to do would be to sell a few bales tomorrow and then we'll buy one it might not be the in-game one we might go for a universal one or possibly the modified slurry tank but we'll have to see but yeah that's not a bad day's work done uh, we've done the bales we've done the, the feed for the cows so yeah that is uh us done for today so hopefully you enjoyed it we will return tomorrow for more Knavesworth farm and then we'll be back on thornton farm so until the next episode Thanks again, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.